So we're asked to find the steady state solution for displacement of the system. Um, and we also want to find what the spring and damper constants must be if they are designed for a natural frequency of 5 radians per second and a damping ratio of 0 0.3. Alright, so to start off with we might answer the second part of this question first um, in terms of what the spring and damper constants need to be. So we're trying to find K and C. So drawing a free body diagram to begin with. So I'm going to say that my um, mass times acceleration term is acting to the right in the positive x direction and that's also the direction of the applied force F um, which coincidentally is a sine wave. We know that our spring and our damper are going to re react back the other way um, to resist that motion. So that's all the forces that are going to be on our mass in the x direction or the direction of the vibration. So we can sum our forces to be equal to the mass times the acceleration and we're going to end up with F minus CX dot minus KX is equal to MX double dot. Alright, so now we want to swing everything to one side of the equation that has an X in it, leave everything without on the other. So it looks like that. Um, and finally, we're going to want to put a 1 in front of this x double dot term. So dividing everything by m will achieve that. Cool. Alright, so remember that we're trying to find out what c and k are this time. But we have the additional information of we're aiming for a natural frequency of 5 radians per second. So that's omega n. And a damping ratio of 0.3. So we can still use our general form of our equation, um, which has these two values in it. Um, and this time we're kind of working backwards to find C and K. So this is our general form. Okay, and I'm going to start off with again um, the omega n squared term. So we can equate them together. So from our system, oop, sorry, <laughs> getting carried away. What we're looking for this time, sorry, is K. So we want to rearrange for K instead this time. All right, so now we can substitute in. So we know our natural frequency is five and the mass in our system is 10 kilograms. So it's going to be 10 times 5 squared. So this is 250 newtons per meter. So now we just need to work out what our um, damper constant is. And for that we know that 2 omega n zeta is equal to c on m. So rearranging for c, we get that. So it's going to be 2 times the natural frequency, which we're designing for 5. Our damping ratio that we're designing for is 0.3 and we already said the mass was 10. So we can work out what C needs to be and in fact it's 30 and the units are newton seconds per meter. Alright, so now we can move on to the other part of the question um, which was finding what the steady state um, equation for displacement of the system is. So, steady state um, is going to occur when the um, time approaches infinity um, because at that point the free vibration component, the homogeneous component, is going to have damped itself out to be almost non-existent. So, so at steady state it occurs as t approaches infinity we know xh um, approaches zero so if x is equal to the, um, sorry, usually write the homogeneous part first. So if x is equal to the homogeneous part plus the particular part, since we have a force vibration question, if ho goes to zero, that means x is just directly equal to xp. So the steady state equation, we just need to determine what xp actually is. So we know that when we have a sine forcing function, the form of this equation 
is this one here and we just need to work out the two constants in it. So I'm just going to paste these in um, so I don't have to write them out again. So we need to substitute in, um, we know FO, we know omega n now and we know zeta and we also know this top omega which is the frequency of your forcing function. So the only other thing that we need to figure out is k total which is the total stiffness in our system from the springs and if we look back at our um, diagram we can see that we only have one spring in our system so it's very easy um, otherwise you can look back at this line if you're working and the k or the part in front of the x um, becomes your total so this one's really easy k total is equal to k um, and we already worked that out down here it's 250 newtons per meter all right so substituting in here so up the top I said that my um, magnitude of my forcing function was 120 gets divided by the total stiffness of 250 subbing in here So you can work out this number, um, it comes to be at 0 0.193 and doing the same for our um, phi, you end up with a phase shift of 0 0.449 negative and it's in radians. Alright, so that just means that your steady state um, function, x is equal to xp, and we can fill in the equation now that we worked out our two constants, um, so it just becomes 0 0.193 sine of 90 plus 0 0.449. We end up with a double negative in here, so it becomes a positive. So again, x is in meters and t is in seconds for that equation. Alright, so that's all for that one. It's pretty straightforward since we only had to work out the particular section. Um, that's all I've got.